How's it going, everybody? Welcome back to Transport Fever 2. I hope you're having a good one because I am excited to be back. I've got some ideas for what I want to get done today, and I think we're just going to go ahead and jump right into it. Except we're not going to do that because I want to take just one second to talk about a little bit of a change that I've made here in Philadelphia. You might have noticed, but I have gone ahead and just extended some of the tracks that come out of the station on this side because the trains were backing up like crazy and hopefully this helps just a little bit. I mean, it does help a little bit. I'm saying hopefully because you haven't seen it work yet, but I've been sitting looking at this for the last 10 minutes and it sort of works. It gives the trains a little bit more room to breathe, I guess. Regardless, they can get in and out a bit quicker and a bit easier. They don't get tailed back quite as much, though they do still tail back. And that's kind of what we're looking for. Now, what's interesting is that Madison is now accepting food and bricks. And I'm pretty sure in the last episode we saw that happen as well. I think this is one of those situations where the city is right on the cusp of accepting new materials, except it, you know, keeps falling back into a place where it doesn't. Uh, we also have Charlotte accepting fuel and tools, which is very exciting. But what's exciting about Madison is that food and brick has kind of been my bread and butter. I mean, one of those is accurate anyway. I guess butter is sort of like, you get like a block of butter, it kind of looks like a brick. So yeah, my food and brick has been my bread and butter for this entire transport company that we have going on so i feel like we could probably move some of that stuff up to madison and i feel like we could do that quite easy because detroit is loaded with bricks absolutely loaded with it so what i might do is i might look into this uh tools and fuel to detroit thingy brick line whatever this is because I'm almost certain if I go and manage this in Forest Street, this is picking up bricks and then it goes back to Philadelphia where it will unload the bricks and then it goes to Salinas where it picks up fuel. So essentially, we could potentially use that same line to move a massive quantity of bricks to Philadelphia and then get another train to take it up to Madison. Or I could probably just do the sensible thing and have a train that goes direct from Detroit to Madison and drops off the bricks that way. And I think, honestly, that's probably what I'm going to do. As for food, I mean, we'll get to that. That's going to be something that's probably a little bit more complicated. But for the time being, let's just see. Bricks are wanted right there in the middle. Food is wanted quite close to the station, which is good. But what this is going to mean is that we are going to need a truck unload stop. And I'm going to put it uh, right about there, I think. Should be just fine. And then for a truck station, I think what I'm going to do with this is give it a bunch of platforms. That's not quite what I wanted. Uh, maybe no platforms on the left. Maybe no platforms on the right. It doesn't really matter too much where I put the platforms. Let's be quite honest. But what I'm thinking is I'm going to put this back here for now. And I might regret this because I might want to expand this at some point, but I think this is kind of a cool place for it. And then what I can do is bring myself a little road right through here and then just connect it up. And this should be fine. Now, I will say this isn't quite what my plan was today. I know that I said we were going to get right into it and I've immediately gotten distracted. But to be fair, that's kind of my thing. That's kind of what I do. But I guess while I'm doing this, we can talk about what my plan was going to be for today. And what it probably still is, this isn't going to take that long to get a train from Detroit to Madison. Uh, my plan is actually very simple. I want to look at aircraft today. I don't think we're going to have a huge aviation industry anytime soon. I think it's going to take a little while for that to get going. But honestly, that's okay. I'm not really too worried about it taking a bit of a minute for uh, aviation to become a thing. I also really like how this looks right here. If I can get another one at the end, which I can't. Can I get a small building there and then a big one at the end? I kind of dig that. I can uh, I can get behind that. I think that's kind of cool looking. Might be a bit weird to have a bunch down there, but we'll go here and we'll do a, a little one and we'll do another big one right there. And that seems fine. So that looks... 
that actually looks pretty cool right next to the train station, I'm going to be honest. Uh, do we have any ground material that sort of matches? Ooh, there we go. Look at that. So that kind of blends it all together and makes it just look like it's one big thing, sort of. Doesn't do a very good job of it, but, you know, it's as good, it's as, good as it's going to be. Uh, yeah, I like that a lot. So that's where the materials, that's where the, the bricks can go from this train station. Then they're going to get delivered over to here. And we just need a train to do that. Although I also need to make sure that trains can come in here and then go back, which currently it doesn't look like they can do. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and take out these signals for just a second. And I need a bit of track that goes, they come in on the right, they come out on the left. We'll go from here to right about there. And we'll go ahead and just put a signal here and a signal there. And now the trains can come into Madison, drop something off, and then come back out and do their thing and go all the way back to Detroit. Easy. And just like that, we have the lines set up. So this red line you can see coming into the station comes from Detroit to Madison. This pink line coming out of the depot goes over to here, and that's going to be what brings the bricks to the people. So what I need to do is go and get myself a road depot, and we'll go ahead and place it. You know what? Placing it up here could be kind of cool. I'm really hoping that I never need to expand this train station because if I ever do, it is going to be a total nightmare. But we'll go ahead and put the road depot, I want to say right about there. I think that's pretty solid. We could probably put a tram depot there as well. Not that I'm necessarily thinking I'm going to set up trams in Madison anytime soon. But again, it gives us kind of a cool looking intersection, which I I kind of like. I think that's I think that's pretty cool looking. And I suppose, I mean, Madison actually does have a, it's a falling population in the minute. It did have a growing population, so maybe using some trams to get people around could be an idea, but we'll get there. I'm going to focus on the deliveries and whatnot first. And what we'll do for this, I guess, is we'll stick with the Benz truck with side stakes, since I think it can carry, yeah, one more than the normal tarpaulin truck. So we'll grab five of these guys. We'll go ahead and paint them in hot pink, which is the color that the medicine lines tend to... You know what? I'm not going to paint them hot pink. I'm going to paint them in like a, a sort of brick red, which I guess that sort of is. And we'll go ahead and put them on the road cargo Madison brick delivery. And they're going to be doing nothing for a while, especially while the game's paused. But they do look the part. That's that's pretty great looking. So now we just need the train. And I've got to be honest, it's very tempting to go with an electric train. I just don't think we've got uh, things electrified all the way down to Detroit. So let's see. Yeah, this train, th this platform here isn't electrified. This one is, though. So in theory, what I could do here is upgrade my tracks like so just upgrade this entire huge section of track and uh, i guess upgrade all of these guys as well this this platform obviously is going to have some problems but what i think i can probably get away with here is using some waypoints to essentially i guess push the train through this platform rather than this lower one and that'll be just fine so let's just get all of these tracks all the way down to detroit upgraded and let's look forward to the day when i have to go and do all of this again for high speed tracks that's going to be such a such a blessing is what that's going to be it's going to be such a blessing having to do all of this again someday what is this Ooh, ooh, hold on a minute is that it so hold on new trucks for one big deal this right here might be the first sort of multi i don't know what the phrase is but it looks like it's a new passenger train i think and i'm kind of excited about that but anyway, let's see. Does Detroit... Oh, Detroit doesn't have catenaries either. Maybe we don't do an electric train. <laughs> maybe maybe we just don't do that. Because I'm really not looking forward to interrupting all of my transport lines to put electricity in here. But I suppose long term it's going to be beneficial, right? Oh, f We're going to do it. And now I'm pretty sure that everything has been set up the way it needs to be. I can go ahead and get myself that electric train that I was talking about. And I'm also wanting to look at that new train that was in here, which I think is a multi-unit thing. Yes, it is. So the M300, it is a passenger train, capacity of 20. It is running on diesel. I'm kind of tempted. I've got to be honest. I, I am kind of tempted. I think it'd be kind of cool 
to get a couple of these guys. I don't know if they're designed to be set up like this, but it can do 62 miles an hour, which I don't know. I think it could be interesting to use this for my passenger lines, but we'll, we'll get to that in a second. Uh, for now, we'll use this guy and I guess we'll go ahead and get it a nice uh, color, which I guess it's going to be moving brick. So let's give it like a, a brick red and see what that looks like. It looks just like the default one. <laughs> I guess that, that makes sense. And uh, yeah, we'll use the flat cars right here as well. And we'll make those brick red as well. And I think my hope here is 120 capacity, 18 million to buy this guy. And essentially, it's going to be going on the Detroit to Madison brick delivery line. And it just works. So that's kind of great. That is absolutely fantastic. Although I do need to look at that line really quickly and make sure it's doing what I need it to do. And it is. It's automatically going through there because that's, I guess, the only route that it can take. So let's go ahead and grab this guy and let's make sure you are set up to do what I need you to do. So in Detroit, you're loading up on brick. In Madison, you are unloading whatever you have. And that, that should start working pretty much immediately, which is what I want it to do. And it's already heading down to Detroit, which is fantastic. So away it goes. It, uh, it is going to be held back by this guy, though, which is a bit of a problem. So I think you're wanting to go in there. I might need to move this waypoint because I realize what it's doing is blocking this 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 middle platform here from, you know, for example, this guy. And then we have this tailback going on and this tailback going on. We have a lot of tailbacks going on. It's a bit of a problem, but we'll figure it out, I'm sure. There we go. So he's, he's zooming through. He's doing his thing. And he's, you know, just not even stopping in Philadelphia, which is kind of fantastic. So, yeah, we'll see how that plays out. I am curious to see, do we have, uh, we don't actually have any bricks waiting around at the moment. Which is a bit worrying. I've got to be honest, that's a little bit worrying. Madison does still want bricks, right? Yeah, Madison absolutely does still want bricks. Okay, we'll see how that plays out. We'll keep an eye on it. But for now, we're going to pivot a little bit. And hold on a minute, actually, are we? What do you do? So that's stone. Do we have stone nearby here? I feel like I've asked this before if there's stone nearby Virginia Beach, and I'm pretty sure there isn't. I'm almost certain we've looked for it. If there was, that'd be so good because these guys want uh, construction material. Then even up here, actually. So if I could get some slag or some sand, I could get a whole bunch of construction material, which would be kind of great. But again, I don't think there's anywhere nearby where I'm going to get any of that. Well, actually, uh, down here, I could get some slag if I really wanted to, but I would need iron and coal. And I guess I've got coal over here. I've got iron right. So it, it is possible we could we could set up a little something something down there, but we'll leave it be for now. Because like I said, I want to pivot a little bit and I want to look at aircraft. I think looking at planes would be really, really cool. I don't know if we need to do that. I don't know if there's much point right now, but I want to look at planes. And I think what I'm going to do is just go ahead and get a passenger plane terminal. What is it? Passenger airfield. And we'll put it near Philadelphia. I don't think it needs to be anything too crazy. I might just put it here, to be quite honest. And uh, we'll just have planes sort of come in and out of Philadelphia. And that should be fine. That should be kind of great. Maybe we put it like over here by the, uh, <laughs> by the hills or we put it... I don't know, over here. This seems like kind of an interesting spot for it. I've got to be quite honest. Although it is going to carve away at least a chunk of that hill, which maybe we don't want it to do that. So I think over here, where things are nice and flat, might be the best place for this. And then I suppose what I want to do is go into Philadelphia and I want to go ahead and manage all of these vehicles on the loop and I want to sell them. And I want to do the same on Philly loop number two and sell all of those because my plan is quite simply to get rid of the Philly loop lines and I want to rebuild them. That's that's essentially what I want to do here. I want to rebuild the Philly loop and start using. What are you complaining about? Ooh, that might be a problem. What's uh, what's what's going on here? You are trying to head in there and you are trying to go that way. Why was this happened? How has this happened? What are you what are you trying to do? Shouldn't you? Hold on a minute. 
Let me have a look at this line. Oh, I see what's happened here. I totally see what's happened here. Right. I need you to be on a different platform in Philadelphia. I also need you to be like green or something so I can see what's going on here. So Philadelphia platform three. Did that help? So you're coming in there. I don't know where you're going. What, what do you go? So what do you do? So you start in Philadelphia, you go to Detroit, you go to Amarillo, Lafayette, and then all the way back to Philadelphia. That doesn't seem like it's necessarily helped. I can't really tell. I think I've managed to fix this. I do have one train that's on completely the wrong line right now, but I'm hoping this guy will sort of figure himself out or... Oh, God. Or they're going to all stop like this. Oh, no. You're going. Okay. So, you're going. If I could get this guy to start moving, that would be kind of great, too. Because he's just sort of sitting there, and that's not really what I need him to be doing. But I do think part of the issue with that train is the fact that there's just there's so many other trains that are trying to get out of there. So, it might be, might be my best interest, honestly, to... Uh, Maybe just sell that train. Maybe I just sell the train and we'll see what happens. Also, if the screeching, if the screeching brakes could, you know, not continue during the autosave, that'd be great. Let's just see what happens. This train is clear. This one's moving. Yeah, I think train 16. Let me, let me manage vehicles. And we're just going to sell train number 16 right there. And that will uh, solve my issue. And then if I just go back in here manage vehicles. We'll just make up for it by buying two new ones. So there we go. I think that has solved the issues around there. I now plan to go in and I want to bulldoze all of these little stops that we have around here. I don't don't really need them anymore. I think we can uh, we can do better. We can expand this a little bit. I want to start using trams as well. That's absolutely something I want to start using around here. So uh, I don't know, I just think it's going to move people around better. That's that's kind of what I'm wanting to do, is just move people around that bit better. So, we'll go in. We'll get ourselves... Where am I looking right here? I'm looking for bus and tram stop. And we're going to want one right in front of the airport. I think that's going to be really important. We can do one sort of up here as well. We can do one sort of here. We'll go and do one sort of down here. And essentially, I'm just going to have trams that sort of loop around this uh, this kind of ring road that we have going on. And then they can sort of head back up to the airport. We'll get one here as well. And that's good. So we have trams that now loop around all of Philadelphia. We could probably do with a few more stops, though. I'm thinking like uh, right about here might be a really good place. And I think that's okay. Now, I do have tram lines that come down through the middle of Philly as well, so we are going to have multiple lines set up here. Uh, we'll go and get one, like, here. And something... Oh, God, there's apparently a train that's stuck somewhere again. That's just great. Uh, let me go and get uh, a tram stop right there. We'll go and get a tram stop right here. And we'll get a tram stop sort of down here as well. And I think that'll be okay. That should be enough. Uh, now, who is complaining about what? Stations report the following problems. Passenger stop cannot be used by cargo vehicles. What do you mean? I'm not... I'm not trying to... Okay, that's not... <laughs> I'm not trying to do that, but sure. Um, you... Are supposed to be going... Here? I would imagine? It's kind of hard to tell. Let me... Let me take that out of there. What, are, what is this... What is this line even delivering? Hold on, what do you do? Philly food. Okay, have I just put food in the wrong place? Uh, yeah, kinda. Kinda. Definitely kinda. Uh, we'll put food over here. And, I mean, you know what we could do? We could have some, we could have some fun with this. If I was to put a truck stop, say, here, and I go to the Philly food line, and I, I just put another truck stop over there, but that'll do, I guess. Uh, we'll have it go from lower Philadelphia. We'll get rid of here. And we'll go and say, drop food off there, and drop food off there. And it can just do like a little loop of that area where it's just dropping off a bunch of food. Does anyone else want food? It's mo it is mostly that space. So two stops should be fine. And that should keep us pretty good. So now what we'll do is get ourselves a 
tram line that goes all the way around Philadelphia. And there we go. We have some trams heading out into Philadelphia. We have actually got four loops going around. It's a little tricky to see them, but there's one going this way, one going the other way. There's one sort of going from the airport down towards the main station. And there's one going from up top down towards the main station as well. So a lot of crossover, a lot of potential for people to get around Philadelphia and all very exciting if I do say so myself. But I think what's going to be more exciting is moving people from Philadelphia to wherever via plane. That's kind of my goal at this point. So I'm thinking Philly to, oh man, where, where can we go? Philly to Amarillo, perhaps? It's been growing quite nicely. Philly, wait, isn't, uh, isn't Gilbert doing amazingly? It was. It did have like over 400 in population at one point. But maybe Philadelphia to to Gilbert would be would be the idea. So let's give that a bit of a shot, and we'll swing this around and put ourselves. I guess we would just put it on the water, you know, something a little bit. Uh, let's see, swing it around this way, and we'll see if we can maybe put uh, put this thing right about here. That'd be kind of a cool spot for it. Runway just runs parallel to the uh, the river. I kind of I kind of like that a lot actually. So we'll do this. We'll get ourselves a nice road to go in front of it. Ooh, we've actually got modern roads. Look at this. We have like medium one-way streets. We've got we've got highways. Oh, that is all very, all very exciting. Gotta be honest, that's all very exciting. Okay. Didn't realize we had uh, unlocked all of that, but apparently we have. So we'll go ahead and put this uh, this country road right in front of the uh, right in front of the airport, like so. And we'll take you right back. We'll bring this over a little bit further and then just curve it sort of this way. In fact, curve it down to, no, right about there seems pretty good actually. And then we'll bring a road sort of straight off of here as well and just connect it out to, uh, to this road here. So that gives us a connection to the airport. We're gonna need to bring, you know, some public transport to get people out there, but that's fine. I think Gilbert could probably do with a few buses anyway, so. We'll go for something relatively simple. We'll do sort of a, we'll do a bit of a loop. Nothing, uh, nothing too crazy, but we'll do, you know, stops right in there. Uh, we'll have a stop that sort of goes obviously to the airport. Uh, we'll have it sort of come back over, I guess this way. Let's see, we'll have it sort of go. I like the idea of bringing it sort of down the main road a little bit. I think that'd be kind of cool. Uh, we'll bring it sort of out this way. Uh, we'll bring it, I guess, over around here and we'll go for one more right in here and that should be fine. Okay, so new line. We're going to want to go from here over to this way and we've got another auto save. I need to turn down the auto save frequency. I really do. It's it's a little, well, it's not a bad thing. It's a weird thing to complain about, isn't it? My game auto saves too much, but I feel like it auto saves a little bit too much sometimes. I feel like I'm I'm always in the middle of doing something and the whole thing freezes up because it has to save. But then I guarantee you, and I'm I'm almost certain I've said these exact words before. I guarantee you, if I ever you know turn down the autosave frequency, what's gonna happen is the game's gonna crash after I build something massive and it's gonna really annoy me. So we'll just uh we'll we'll leave it where it where it is for now. So now we have some buses heading out into Gilbert. We're hopefully gonna see some people, and we do see some people that are interested in moving around a little bit. I guess now we just do the plane line. So we're gonna go from Gilbert right down here all the way up to Philadelphia, which is gonna be right here. And that's not bad. That's a pretty good flight path. It just, you know, straight down, straight back. That's good. So we'll make this, I'm gonna make it green because we don't use that too much. And it's gonna be air passengers it is uh, Philly to, I guess, Gilbert. And now we just need a plane or a few planes, potentially. We'll start with, well, I feel like we should start with a few, I'll be quite honest, but we'll <laughs> we'll see what happens. Uh, we have this guy, which can do 109 miles an hour. It carries three people. So let's go ahead and buy three of them. Let's paint them a nice green color and let's put them on that line and see what happens. Oh, look at you. Look at you. Amarillo is also accepting a bunch of new stuff as well. That's so cool. This is so cool. I'm so excited about this. 
I love when I get to start putting planes into the world. It just makes it feel interesting. It makes it feel very exciting having all these planes going around as well. I absolutely adore it. And I'm also hoping that we start to see a bunch of people moving around Philadelphia and maybe, maybe coming out this way to fly down to Gilbert. I'll be honest, I, I don't care if they do. It doesn't really bother me all that much. I just want the planes. <laughs> Whether or not they're actually productive is neither here nor there. So now that the planes are running, and even though there's no one in Philadelphia that wants to use them, which actually reminds me, is there anyone down this way that wants to use them by any chance? There is. We actually do have people waiting in Gilbert to go to Philadelphia. We have a good number of people wanting to get on public transport as well. So that's actually kind of fantastic. And I suppose it makes sense, given that we don't run a passenger train down to Gilbert at the moment. The only way to get to Philadelphia from Gilbert is, I guess you drive yourself or you're gonna fly. So this might actually work out really nicely in my favor. But what I would like to do is I would like to look into stuff like this, the Lafayette to Fargo line. It has a bunch of passenger trains. There's a good number of people on it. But what I'm thinking I might do is select all of these and I might replace them. I'm very tempted to replace them with the multiple unit thing that we have, the M300, which has a capacity of 20. Now, my thinking here is that we do have these big trains and they're great, but what if I was to go and say, sell all of those vehicles? So now we have none, and obviously that's not good. There's people that wanna go from Lafayette to Fargo, but what if, and this is probably really stupid of me, what if I bought a bunch of these? What if I bought a whole bunch of these and said, well, why don't we put those on the Lafayette to Fargo line? Why don't we say that just a whole bunch of these are going to operate like buses from Lafayette to Fargo? I, I have a feeling I know what I'm about to do, and I have a feeling that what I'm about to do is stupid. But I also really, really like this idea. It might be in my best interest to turn these guys into just a big train, but we'll have some fun. We'll, we'll treat them like buses is what we're going to treat them like. There's, you know, 62 mile per hour uh, buses on, on rails. This is, this is, <laughs> this is a terrible idea. That looks so, st <laughs> it looks so dumb right now. <laughs> And honestly, because it looks so dumb, I've decided to go ahead and just turn them into actual multi-unit trains. These guys, I think, are supposed to be singular unit because all these, you know, wagons at the back are just trains. Although I guess, hold on a minute. Would it make more sense for me to, I, I don't know why I'm being an idiot today, but I wonder if this would make more sense. If I go to passenger wagon and I just grab like this guy, would that, I mean, this guy can go 112 miles per hour, but what if I just did this? What if I just did a bunch of, oh, well, that does look kind of silly. It does, it does look kind of silly. Uh, what about the other wagon? What about the six axle passenger? It does also look kind of silly, but we can get the same capacity for only two meters longer and it is considerably cheaper. Well, sort of. I don't know how well these guys pull things. I don't think they're very powerful at all. Yeah, no, they're not. Ah, forget it. We'll just keep them looking stupid for now and that's fine. It's just, it'll move a lot of passengers at the very least and that's all I can hope for. Although if I replace every wagon that I have, every locomotive that I have with an electric one, we'd move people faster. And I feel like I should probably do that. I'm, I'm gonna have to do that at some point. There's a lot of stuff I'm gonna have to do at some point. I'm honestly not entirely looking forward to it. That's usually why I'm so reluctant to build out massive train lines until we have a high-speed rail, because eventually I'm going to have to go and upgrade all of it. Or I'm going to have to look in the Steam Workshop for a mod that will let me upgrade all of it. Oh no, would you look at this? We actually have 28 people wanting to go down to Gilbert. So that begs the question, there's 15 of 15 people currently on those planes. Should I just, I'm just going to duplicate them. We're just gonna get more planes. That's that's the way to do it. Just keep throwing more planes at the problem and things will be great. And I'm also realizing if I really wanted to, I could throw another, I guess, passenger terminal 
right here and right here. And I could get another one as well, which I'm going to do. And that now gives us four terminals where we could have four different plane lines coming into Philadelphia, which honestly might be kind of exciting. That, that could be kind of exciting. We could do Philadelphia. You know, you could take a plane all the way up to... Ooh, that looks like a mean train. Uh, you could take a plane up to Glendale, which admittedly isn't a very big place. It is losing people and it does have a passenger line to get there, but that would be kind of exciting. Or we could take cargo, I guess, up to Cincinnati. We could take fuel and, and tools if we really wanted to. There's a lot of things we could do with aircraft, to be quite honest. I just, it, it's weird because we are in that, that phase where the planes aren't really fast enough to warrant having so many of them. They're just kind of a cool novelty that I, I like to have. So I think they're probably just going to stay in that phase, but we'll see. What I am going to do is I want to look at the meat food Philly line. And I want to manage these vehicles and see about upgrading every single one of them. Because we didn't just get this mean looking thing, which is very, very powerful, very powerful train. Uh, so I kind of want to get this. I, I absolutely do. Uh, so let's just rip you out of there and add this guy. We will rip you out of there and add this guy, rip you out of there and add this guy. And what I think this means is, in theory, I could go ahead and add uh, a considerable, considerable number of wagons to the uh, the backs of those trains. Because that thing, oh my god, it is huge. I think I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna do that. I think it's about time we do that. So, manage vehicles. Let's... Well, why do we want to do this? I might just sell all but one. And then what we'll do is just upgrade the one train that we have. So we'll go into cargo. We have the box cars. Uh, we'll just rip all of those out and replace them. Uh, and we'll make them, I mean, they've been yellow for the longest time. They're moving, this is meat food Philly, right? So meat to food to Philly. So it is It is just box cars that we're looking for. Maybe a nice red. Maybe we change it up with a nice, nice strong red. Or we change it up with a slightly less saturated red. That's a very bright red, though. We could just go with that one. Or the brick red that we've used elsewhere. It does look quite nice. And there we go. We have a brand new train. A whole bunch of new boxcars in the back as well. This guy is moving a good chunk of food with plenty of space left. We've got a new one going out here as well. With uh, two more new trains ready to head out as well. Uh, now, interestingly, this guy is now blocking off both sections of track right there but that's just gonna sort of be the way of things i guess we we have ever so slightly put ourselves in a bit of a situation where there's just so many trains coming and going around philadelphia that i think oh that looks that looks bad no i think that's actually just about okay uh yeah we have a lot of trains that want to get in and out of philadelphia i think we're going to be seeing we're going to be seeing a whole lot of tailbacks for a little bit until they kind of find their groove with these new giant trains, but that's okay. I feel like the alternative is that one day we just go ahead and create actual giant trains that just move everything and have one big line, which I think would be really cool. I think that'd be an interesting experiment in this game is trying to make a, you know, mile or two mile long train and just have it go through everywhere dropping stuff off at very specific stations i think that would be awesome i really do i'm also wondering is madison even getting any brick it isn't why is why is madison not getting any brick it's about to lose its brick demand i think it only wants two it's also not getting much in the way of goods why what is what is going on there so it's got a frequency of 21 minutes interesting that is that is really really interesting i'm i'm kind of wondering why that is so goods to matt there are a lot i guess it's hmm i guess it's the destinations right there's four destinations each one has a different demand and it has to hmm we might want more trains doing that but then that's gonna be more trains coming in and out of philadelphia which as we can see is currently causing a bit of a it's, it's causing a bit of a, a cluster. Now, this right here is an interesting little development. Gilbert has just popped up a quarry 
And while I was down looking at this, I was looking around and I'm thinking to myself, well, can we use those anywhere? Can we make some bricks? Can we maybe get some supplies for this end of the map? And well, it turns out that the answer is in fact going to be a resounding, no, we cannot. But what I did notice is that Gilbert has a meat processing plant and Gilbert has a fishery. So if I was to take two fish, I can make meat. And then we could take that meat and we could move it over to Gilbert and we could move it up to Philadelphia and turn it into food. Or we could take it way over here and turn it into food there. But I, I, I like the idea of bringing more meat to Philadelphia from Gilbert because we have food coming from Fargo into Philadelphia, which is getting split into a bunch of different places already. So why don't we have the trains that bring the meat from Gilbert to Philly, drop that meat off. It gets picked up by other trains taken to Fargo, gets brought back, dropped in Philly. And the train that brought the meat in the first place takes it back to Gilbert. So essentially, I think that's what we're going to do. That seems to me like a pretty good idea.